In this video, we will walk through how to use Bloomberg to do basic financial analysis by linking Bloomberg to the Excel spreadsheet provided in class. The first thing you need to do is go to the Financial Study Center on the first floor of the business building where they have the Bloomberg machines and all the machines have the double screens, have Bloomberg. So when you log into that machine, just like you log into any other uh, computer at UTSA, you'll have a machine, the screen will show a button that says Bloomberg. When you double click on Bloomberg, this screen will come up. This is the Bloomberg screen. I will maximize it. If you've never used Bloomberg before, then the first thing you need to do is just press this enter or go button. And when you do that, a login page will come up. And if you already have a login, just log in. I'll do that. If you don't, just click down here where it says create new login and just create your own account and just follow the instructions. Make sure you have a cell phone with you because they will send you an initial code to get logged in. I'm going to go ahead and log in. My account name is my first initial, last name, and a one because I have multiple accounts. And then I'll click in my password. Make sure when you get your password and your login name that you write those down or take a photo of it so you know what what you're using. So I'm now logged in. Um, here's the Bloomberg screen. There's a lot of ways you can teach yourself Bloomberg from Bloomberg itself. Uh, it's really quite powerful but for our purposes we're going to jump right to the Excel spreadsheet. And so here's the Excel spreadsheet and when you load it it shows a company Walmart, which is our primary company, and then other companies as well as you want as competitors here. We just have one competitor, Costco. And the spreadsheet shows you the steps that you're supposed to take. I'm going to do that here. I've already done Walmart and Costco, so what I thought I would do is create two other companies so I can compare them. So what other companies might we compare? Why don't we try doing say McDonald's. McDonald's ticker is MCD and I'll type in the name of the company McDonald's and then a good competitor is Wendy's its ticker is WEN WEN and I'll type in Wendy's if you're not sure about the ticker of your company go back to the Bloomberg screen and see for here if I didn't know what Wendy's was I can just type in Wendy's there it is, WEN, see how it comes in, and that US equity just tells us that it is a stock. So the WEN -E is the ticker, and that's what I would put into the spreadsheet. And so I've got Wendy's and McDonald's loaded. So on the next tab, you see the first tab is the intro sheet. So after the intro sheet is the Bloomberg data and that's where we're actually going to be pulling the data. So I'm going to click on the Bloomberg data sheet. And here it looks a little bit small. I'll expand it some. And when I expand it, <clears throat> I show that my first company up here is McDonald's. If you key that into the intro page, it will show McDonald's here. Everything loads automatically. and so. We can see all this data that's coming in on McDonald's. Now, in cell B2 is where the formula is. The formula we're actually using is BDH, which is Bloomberg Data Historical. And it's going to bring in data for any accounts listed in cells A3 through A43. Here's all the accounts we want. We want their revenue. We want their total assets, their net income, their interest expense. These are all the codes that Bloomberg uses to find the data. And it's going to bring that data in for any company in, call, in, in cell A1. In this case, it's McDonald's. And then the years I want, I just have keyed across the top. This is already loaded for you, so you don't have to make any changes. So once you, once you change that company on the intro page, it automatically changes all the data on this page. You'll notice in A1, we have McDonald's. If you come down the page, you'll see that Wendy's is in A48. And the same thing, we have all this data for Wendy's. And then down below that, McDonald's again, and McDonald's the second time is simply the pull data for the forecast, which I don't use in all my classes, but classes that do forecast, that would be valuable. So now I've got all the data, but the problem is, if you go to cell B2, that formula, DDH, will not work on an Excel 
file loaded on any computer other than the computer with the Bloomberg link. And so your computer at home will know how the Bloomberg link, which means if you did this file at UTSA and went home with it, you would get all error messages when you loaded it at home. So what we want to do is take all this wonderful data that we just pulled out of Bloomberg in a split second, and we want to copy it to another page as values, so we don't have to worry about that. So if you click on the little diamond up here in the, in the left, next to the A and above the 1, and then type Control C, and you'll see the little ants running around saying that you want to copy it, and then go to the next sheet, Bloomberg Paste Values, and click an A1. If you right click in A1 and do Paste Special and do Values and hit OK, then everything you just brought in to McDonald's is now come over. You've got all of this data. The next thing we're going to do is go to print page one. We're going to just look and see if we have any error messages. And you'll notice that for McDonald's, everything looks pretty clean until we get down here to revenue per square foot. Well, we could not get square foot for McDonald's. You can see we've got a lot of problems there. We will probably just have to hide those two rows because we don't have that data. So I'm going to hide those two rows. Just right click, you know, click on them, click on the 29, hit your shift key, click on the 30, right click, and just say hide. Number of employees, we do have number of employees, so we can get revenue per employees, but you know with McDonald's we only get a couple years of data, so that's not going to help us. So we're going to hide 31 and 32 as well. What we do have for McDonald's is the amount of property plant equipment that they have, and so we can look at revenue per property plant and equipment. I'm not sure that's a great ratio for McDonald's, but we'll keep it. And then the other, ratio, the other one we have is total number of stores. That's a probably pretty good one for, for McDonald's. And then we can see revenue per store, which is looks like a small number. It's only 800, looks like $800. It's probably, uh, maybe it's 800,000. We have to double check on this revenue per store if I've got that calculated correctly. Um, it, it probably needs to be multiplied uh, by another thousand. We'll see. We, that's one thing you have to double check and make sure your numbers are in the right decimals. Uh, but anyway, we've got revenue per store. So everything, all the other NAs are taken care of. Now, if you had an NA just in one place, let's say you're doing total number of stores, but McDonald's was missing just one number, say in year 2010, it was missing one number. What you can do is go back to the Bloomberg Pace Values, find the number of locations, see it's on line 20, go to that one year where it's missing and you could interpolate between the years around it and just plug that in there. I just recommend that if you plug a number here on the Pace Values that you highlight it in yellow so that you know that you, you pasted it. But that's perfectly fine for our purposes. In real life you might do some more research to try to find out exactly what that number is. But not all these numbers get reported every single year, especially numbers like sales per square foot or sales per location, those type of things. So when you get those type of ratios, sometimes one, one data point is missing. So if you look at this page, everything's lined up. You notice that the title has already changed when you typed in your company name at the beginning. I'm using this function called concatenate, which allows me to combine text in ways that looks, makes it very professional. Uh, the next page I'm going to go to is the competitor page. On the competitor page, you can see down here, most of the data is fine. I don't see any NAs, but the one thing I see is revenue per square foot. I'm going to edit line 41, and instead of being revenue per square foot, I'm going to do revenue per store, and then I need to go find that. So in cell B4, C41, excuse me, C41, I'm going to hit the equal sign, and then go over to the paste values, come down to Wendy's, and I'm going to take their sales revenue in line 50 divided by their number of locations, line 67, and hit enter. I'm going to change it to a decimal up here. I'm going to copy that over. And so now I have revenue per store. Oops, I have a typo there, so I can go back and edit it and fix it. Revenue per store. And so I've got that set up. And so my page one, I've got revenue per store. My page two will come back to the matter. I've got my competitors. So data for graphs, you can see down here, we're going to do revenue per store. So McDonald's, I need to go find revenue per store for McDonald's. So hit the equal sign. Here I go to print page one. 
There's my revenue per store. I hit enter on that. Copy it across. I'm going to highlight this entire section and change it to commas so that I can compare the two. Now we may find some really strange differences between McDonald's and Wendy's mainly because uh, of how much they do in franchising versus actual company owned stores. But for our purposes, we're good right now. Uh, we'll use this data. We can compare the two companies. And so I now have my print page one, looks really professional, no NAs, no major errors anywhere. Just look through quickly, make sure everything looks good. My print page two, what you'll notice here is the graphs just don't work very well because we've changed companies. So pretty simply what I'm gonna do on asset turnover, I will just click on the Y axis, then I'll right click and do format axis. And then over here on the far right, You'll see for formatting axis, I can just hit the reset button and you can see that it automatically updates my chart nice and clean. I can do the same thing with net margin. Just hit the reset button, hit the reset button both times on the bounds and the units. And you can see here it works really well. Now I don't like the dates being right there in the middle so you can click on the X axis, and do format axis. And then when you do um, labels, you can do low. I just think that looks a whole lot better. Same thing on asset turnover times net margin. I can do reset and reset. And again, didn't put the, the ears where I wanted to, so I'm gonna format that and put that low. Tax impact, same thing, reset, reset. Just hit all the reset buttons. You can see how that looks. Here it goes up to 100%, 150%. I think 100% is fine, so I'm gonna change that 100% even though part of Wendy's goes off the chart I think that's okay you can see Wendy's tax is all over the place I can come on down the page combine financial leverage same thing hit the reset button as many times uh, again you see how volatile Wendy's is we do re, uh, return on equity hit the reset button again we got these years in a place I don't want them so I click on the labels make them low Again, click on the labels make them low so obviously McDonald's is looking like the stronger company here. My revenue square foot, this is actually now revenue per store. So I change that. I click on this and I format, right click and say format axis and just reset that. I can format the axis also, click here on numbers and give it maybe two decimal places. So I can tell what's going on. We can certainly see McDonald's is strong there. And then my EBIT, versus cash from operations, hit the reset there. Again, you can see, I don't like how much white space Excel does as a default. I think my lowest number can be 4,000. I wanna get rid of the white space, so I'm gonna change my minimum to 4,000. And there I have my data. And so as you can see, I've got a pretty good uh, spreadsheet set up. My competitor, all you need to do, I mean competitor set up, the data for graph building, everything pretty much feeds automatically. There's a few other pages in here that are valuable to you that we'll talk about in class, but this pretty much covers it, then just make sure you save your file um, so you have this data so you can work at it from home. Hope that helps.